Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Tissue Online North America. This is the Talk Tissue. And today we are very grateful to talk to Jim Gavick, the plant manager of Select Products, Henderson, North Carolina. Jim, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I'm sure the rest of the industry is excited to hear from you. How are you doing? Not too bad, Brian. It's uh, good to see you again. Good to talk to you again and uh, uh, good to talk about the industry. I know. I, I always love doing these because, you know, it seems like for the most part, we always bump into each other either at a mill or at a trade show. But those are far and few in between. And I know I've known Jim for some time now. And most of you watching probably know Jim from the industry. He's How many years do you have in the tissue industry, Jim? Uh, this is my 25th year. 25th year holy cow it, it, and it's you know you're still a young guy but you're considered a veteran now you know people associate industry vet with an older person but i would not uh classify you as an older person in the industry but you definitely know your stuff and so i'm glad you took the time to talk to us today i wanted to talk about some of your history and maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the changes maybe you've seen throughout your 25 years what stands out the most to you as something that's maybe changed or for the better? Well, um, uh, I started at Procter & Gamble in uh, Mahopany, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's their uh, largest uh, paper facility. You know, uh, Charmin, Bounty, uh, uh, they make Pampers and Love's diapers there as well. Yeah. Um, eight paper machines, which is quite a bit, you know, 30 some converting lines. Uh, pretty big facility, um, you know. And then I went to Marcal. Uh, Marcal still still a large large paper company. We had the devastating fire in in January of 2019, um, and uh, uh, you know here here at Select is a is a much smaller family owned company, um, and and it's it's really interesting to see the uh, the differences in the in the philosophies of how people run as far as how much lean manufacturing they implement or don't implement, you know, how much can they afford to implement or, or not implement. Um, and uh, also with the workforce, with the varying wages from large companies to middle-sized companies and small companies. Um, and, you know, and now it's my first time I've, I've had a converting operation where we didn't have our own paper machines. So, all the paper that that we get at Select, we purchase that paper. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't produce any of it. Whereas at Marcal and Procter and Gamble, it was very. We had a problem. We just walk over to the paper machine and talk to our counterparts and tell, hey, we need a little more caliper or we need a little more stretch or you know whatever it happens to be. And you know, and for the most part, you get it. Whereas here, you know, you you know, you might be buying paper domestically or you might be buying it internationally, and those are you know, some different challenges, but uh, that's what makes the job interesting. Yeah, no, uh, I know. I thank you for giving us a little trajectory there of kind of where you've been and the differences that exist within those, you know, different, let's call them different mill opportunities or or, or mill levels, um, you know, from fully integrated to being a small converter. Uh, I know a few years ago, there was a lot of scarcity in the market in regards to jumbo rolls, parent rolls of tissue. How is how is that currently? Uh, that's that's pretty much died down. I mean, uh, 2020, obviously, 2021, that was still a, a pretty big factor. Um, but, um, you know, we, we've seen some ebbs and flows in 22, 23. Uh, um, you know, right now, actually, there seems to be a little bit of an uptick in uh uh paper purchasing um in the market so so right now we you know you know the prices are starting to go up a little bit paper's starting to get a little bit more scarce but there doesn't seem to be anything you know just certainly domestically or you know uh, maybe globally you could maybe pin some things on the uh the conflict in ukraine or the the sure. conflict going on in in israel i know we've seen some issues with some shipping and on the black sea and some issues getting things through the suez canal which um you know that how has an impact you know abu dhabi is a big uh exporter of, yeah. of paper 
and uh, right, you know, when when you're getting from Abu Dhabi, it's going to go through the Suez Canal, and you know, if there's trouble getting through the canal, that the the lead times increase dramatically, mm. the price increases, all those things. So yeah, is, has inflation? I mean, ev- inflation has affected everybody. Is it affecting currently? What's what's the the level of inflation? Yes, it it it, it is in in the paper market. Um, uh, we're, we're we see it in in the cost of paper. Um, you see it in the cost of all your raw materials, uh, yeah. poly, um, uh, folding boxes, KDFs, things things like that. Um, glue, especially glue, seems to be to be affected. Um, but but the biggest impactor is on is on the the wages and and yeah. uh, and when you're hiring folks and trying to keep the folks that you have, um, the inflation really hits the consumer at the end of the day. Um, you know, so yeah, for us, we're selling a package of toilet paper or napkins or paper towels to consumers, but our employees are also consumers and they're not just consuming paper products that we make. They're also consuming, you know, uh, literally consuming food or, or, you know, uh, buying a television or sure. all the different things that the clothing that, that you might buy. So that inflation hits our, our employees. And so then we have to try to maintain a, a competitive wage to keep our employees. It's really a, um, uh, it, it, it's a worker's market right now because if you're if you're good if you're a good worker on a machine, um, you can go almost anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so we got to maintain that competitive edge, and and it's not not always easy because at at the end of the day, you know, you're looking at the bottom line, you're looking at your EBITDA number on a you know, used to be on a quarterly basis. Now, almost every company does it on a monthly basis to make sure that we're for the longevity of the company, the long term success of the company. Yeah, no, I, I totally hear that. And especially in a manufacturing area like North Carolina, you know, there is no shortage of manufacturing companies in that area, all fighting for probably the same people, same machinists, you know, same operators. And so it becomes very competitive. No, thanks for that insight. Uh, why don't we talk about select products? I know you have a couple of product samples there to show us. Can you run us through some of the products you guys are offering in the market right now? Yeah, so this is uh, uh, one of our packages. This is a select bath tissue. Um, this is a two-ply bath. We also have, uh, um, this is one of our 12-pack uh, uh, single-ply bath tissue. Um, we also make kitchen towels, paper towels, uh, uh, lunch napkins, dinner napkins, uh, uh, facial tissues. Um, facial's a big part of our business. Um, we do a lot of contract converting uh, for some different folks, uh, but Select is our brand that, that we market to folks. Do you currently have capacity for other contract work? Are you guys looking yeah. to expand? A- ab- absolutely, yeah. We've, we've just made uh, some capital purchases for some new equipment. Um, some a brand new line will be arriving in uh, it'll be installed in august okay and uh we have some other capital investments that are coming toward the end of the year and in the first quarter of 2025. fantastic uh, so for those of you watching that need some capacity to reach out to select products i'm sure jim would be able to help you or i'm sure jim can connect you with someone that would love to help you in that regard Absolutely, we do that <laughs> Uh, one of the one of the other things I want to touch on with you that I've talked to you about before is you've been mostly in a role where you allow suppliers or vendors to come in and visit you. And we've talked a lot about supplier etiquette and vendor etiquette and how they in terms of how they engage with a company like yours to, you know, everyone's trying to push their product at every mill. There's only so many tissue converters in North America. And so if you, I, I just wanted to, for you to kind of give that same spiel you gave to me a little bit about maybe a two minute version of what you would suggest vendors, how, how you would suggest the approach to someone like you. Yeah, I, I think it really depends on whether or not there's a prior relationship there or not. I mean, it, in, in our case, there's, there's a prior relationship there. So um, I would expect that, you know, I, I'm never going to get a cold call from Brian. Um, mm-hmm because I, I know Brian, Brian has my number, I have his number, you know, we need something, we, we talk um, pretty regularly, as, as well as the, the other vendors that I deal with, whether 
um, you know, we're talking paper vendors or part suppliers, you know, what have you. Um, uh, you know, I realized that when when you don't have a contact at a company, cold calling is really the only thing you can do sure. is just walk in the door. You got your business card, and hopefully you can. You know, where's where my office here? I, I try to have my office right near the front door. It's got big windows, and you know, people see me when they come in, and I I can you can tell sure. when somebody's a vendor and what they're. Um, uh, you know, so so I I try to go out and meet folks, but I don't always have the time. Sometimes. You know, I might be in a, in a meeting or I might be on the floor, you know, uh, you know, helping with something. Uh, but um, the, the the big thing is scheduling that time. And so once the relationship is, is established, you know, I always expect that I'm never going to get cold called or at least I shouldn't by somebody that I have an existing relationship with. Yeah. And depending on on what, you know, I, I like to be visited somewhat regularly um, by by the the uh, the folks that I normally do do business with so quarterly visits um, are are to me to me the minimum um, you know I I currently have a, a rep now that's you know sells me stretch wrap and you know we got a um, we we went with this vendor and um, two months later sends me a notice that the price is going up mm. and I haven't seen the guy in six months so now I'm looking for somebody else to do business with not because it's his price isn't still competitive, but I don't feel like he really wants to do business with us yeah. because he doesn't seem interested. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I don't I don't need help with him um, or from him at the moment. Um, but what if I did? Um, yeah. You know, I, I got a million things going on. Stretch wrap is one tiny little thing that I deal with in, in my job, so I may not always have the time or you know, go through my notes of the things that could come up on a daily basis to go, oh yeah, I got to get a hold of my stretch wrap vendor, mm -hmm. um, uh, which, which is why some of my vendors, um, they'll, you know, when they quote something, they'll give me a re email reminder. Hey, you asked us for this quote, but you didn't, um, you didn't put in a PO. I was, you know, we're, you know, just want to remind you, are, are you going to put in a PO for that? Or is this just an exploratory thing? Something like that. Those are all very helpful things. I mean, it's it's not all about, hey, can the vendor come and buy me lunch or bring me a hat or a shirt or something? Yeah. I don't really care about that. What, what I do care about is that we have a good relationship. And then, um, you know, when I need help, you, you know, the, the vendors help me. Um, and then I help them because I, I have friends across the industry that work, yeah. you know, in, in a, a lot of different companies, you know, and and the vendors that I have done business with for years and years and years, um, I, I routinely talk about them. Sure. And like I said, it's a small industry. You're going to come across the same people several times throughout your career. And, you know, the idea around gift culture, I think you, you, you brought up a good point there is you're not so much interested in in a gimmicky hat or in a flashlight or in your pen, it, you, you really, really, really want their support and to make sure when you call, they're going to answer and help you out. So, I mean, that, that really is the name of the game. The reputation goes a long way in this industry. So um, I think those were all fantastic points. Uh, we're, we'll include some, you know, maybe some pictures of some of your products into this video. If you want to send those to me, we'll make sure they get into this video so people can can sure. check those out as well and if people are interested we'll we'll have your email listed and your contacts um but i encourage everybody watching here to give select products a look i'm sure that we'll, we'll include their website as well um if there's anything follow-up wise you can contact me or jim gavick and we'll be happy to connect you with all the right people jim thanks so much for the time i always enjoy talking to you great insights on the supplier culture um and talk to you next time no problem. I appreciate it, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Thanks.